Hello and welcome to another video. In today's episode we are going to take a look at the methods that you can use to locate which application was installed by which package. And before we get into the details, why don't you consider subscribing to this channel so you get notified when new Arch Linux, Linux or liberated software related content is coming up. So the story behind this video is that I recently found out that when I click on my application menu, I see this block attack and checkers here. So when I go to my games uh, submenu, I can see beside all the games that I installed myself, this uh, Sudoku checkers and block attack, which I certainly did not install for myself. So I decided to take a look into what happened here because you know on Windows 10 on my laptop I am kind of used to that even though I always try to uninstall Candy Crush Saga it always comes back but it is a kind of weird to me that even on Linux you get these unwanted game applications especially because they are just free software so it's not like someone is trying to make a profit on installing these games on my computer and so I decided to take a good look at what's going on here. So how I get, got started is that I went to this USR uh, slash share slash applications. So this is the uh, the directory or the folder that we are at. This is the location where e uh, your uh, desktop environment gets the icons from. So you can see here is the zero AD, the accessibility and the Blender, Battle for West North, and some other things. So these are um, kind of icon files. So if we go to the console and uh, cd into this directory, usr slash share slash applications. Applications. What? Applications. Okay. So if we are in this directory, we can type in the ls-la command and we can see all these files here. Let's just uh, pipe that into a less command so I can scroll through this. So you can see that there are all these files like cinnamon settings.desktop and uh, cinnamon settings-sound.desktop and gnome stuff. So these are LibreOffice desktop. So these are uh, .desktop files, and uh, the .desktop files in the file manager, they appear by the, the name of the application, not by the file name for some reason. So for example, this will just appear as block attack. And what we want to know is what does this icon launch? What is the uh, binary application? Or what is the application, uh, the command that is run when we start this program. So let's try to find the block attack icon. So I will just try ls and uh, maybe block something. That's what my guess would be. Yeah, blocks.desktop. So let's uh, take a look at the blocks.desktop file in WIMP. And you can see that name is block attack. So this name that you can see here is the same name that will appear here. And I already made a video about these uh, icon files, these dot desktop files. So you can take a look at that if you are interested. But what we are curious about is that this, the exec part, exec equals blocks. So you can check out that if we go back to our terminal and just tarp, type in uh, blocks, then it will launch the uh, application. And um, let me show you that it launched uh, the block attack application just by typing in that command. And if I close this window, then of course uh, we are getting back our prompt here. So this is block is the command that will run that program. So let's find out with the which uh, command, which blocks. And you can see that this is the usr slash bin slash blocks. And now we want to know why is this uh, 
on our computer what is the package that installed this for us. So for that we will use pacman-q and o and the capital Q is query for querying the local package database and the lowercase o uh, stands for owns. So which package owns this file and then we can either type in this usr slash bin slash blocks or the other option is just you can type in the uh, backtick and uh, which blocks which is the comment substitution version and uh, you can see that this is owned by the fltk package so what the hell is fltk so let's uh, pacman dash qi for querying the local package database with i which shows us the information and so this is going to be fltk and i will pipe it into less well it fit on one screen so it doesn't matter okay so fltk is a graphical user interface toolkit for x and it will uh, tell us that what is, are the dependencies of this and what are the optional dependencies Oh, Alzalib for Sudoku example application. So we got Alzalib installed, so the Sudoku example application works. And required by LMMS. So here you can see that LMMS is the uh, package that is it is a dependency of. And uh, so you can see that it is installed, reason is installed as a dependency for another package. And uh, so by this you can see that this was installed when I installed the LMMS uh, package. And so we can just, uh, in this, at this point we can kind of think that, okay, so probably this FLTK was what installed the other two games too. So we can try to uh, figure that out with QL, FLTK, I guess that lists out all the files that are owned by the package. So we can kind of grab this maybe, I don't know, like things that contain bin. And now there are USR bin blocks and USR bin checkers and fluid and FLTK config. So there are all these things, that are, all these binaries that are owned by this uh, package and now we know exactly why these are there and so at this point one can ask the question that one what can i do about it what if i don't want those example games because this is what it seems like those games come with this package as kind of an example for this uh, graphical toolkit so there is not much <laughs> we can do about it. So basically this is uh, one of the things that, and un until this point, this is basically the only thing that is a kind of a negative point for me in Arch Linux because in general, I like the Arch Linux philosophy and I like that it requires this very hands-on approach. So you have to really kind of administer your system for yourself. Some people are uh, making jokes that what Arch Linux is like really bad because they just don't have an installer and because they are too lazy to <laughs> too, too lazy to keep uh, updating an installer but you know for me it's very nice that this system requires me to kind of be very hands-on with my software what do I install and how do I configure is everything depends on me so it is a little weird for me that this kind of philosophy brings out that that i install one software and that software brings in another package and that other package contains like a lot of uh, user facing applications so it's not like it has to use some uh, graphical uh, toolkit for it for them for the, so the program i need uses this graphical toolkit so it brings in like the elements of the graphical toolkit it brings in everything even the example games with that toolkit and as you could see here uh, it brings in this uh, fluid uh, stuff which is uh, 
basically this uh let me show you uh so this is fluid this kind of development uh platform for creating applications in this uh, toolkit so yeah it is uh, not really minimal it's not really uh you know just the things that you want because and I, I understand the reason behind this so the reason behind this is arch linux is a community driven um linux distribution so all the people who are maintaining packages for arch linux are doing it in their free time and uh, that means that well of course they want to minimize the work they have to do and so when an application comes out and figures out that they want to use this uh, FLTK uh, package as a way to develop their own uh, software. So let's uh, dash QI uh, LMMS. So they just made like it to depend on all these kind of other things so they can use the FLTK toolkit and they don't have to, you know, include this in their own software. But when at, in Arch Linux, they don't make a separate package that, okay, this one only contains the toolkit and then we make another package which contains the uh, further tools for the developers because, well, they want to minimize, of course, the, the number of packages they have to maintain, which is, let's face it, the more packages we have in a rolling distribution, the bigger the chance that something will uh, get screwed up. So... We can understand that and also like Arch Linux is mostly um, attractive distribution for developers and uh, so the developers they probably or like the assumption is that if you need this uh, toolkit you want to develop with it and well if some other application just pulls it in as a dependency well just you know deal with it and so this is basically uh, my conclusion for this video. So I hope uh, I could give you some uh, good practical tools in the command line that you can use to find, if you, f if you find uh, this kind of anomaly, you can use these commands to find where do these uh, programs cr come from. You can basically use it for any kind of uh, weird things. So if you just want to like which grab and so you want to find out where does grep come from for some reason then you can do the pacman dash qo and uh, slash usr slash bin slash grep and so this way you could figure out where does the grep command come from what package uh, is giving you the ability to grep and so this can also be useful if you maybe make your own bash script and you would like to make a package of this of this bash script that maybe you want to put in the AUR or just want to share it with other people and this way you can just go through the commands that you use in your script and this way you can find out what dependencies you should add to your package so what other packages is really your uh, script depends on so this is the end of this video. If you found it useful, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content like this, you can check out my playlist and uh, you can subscribe if you are interested in liberated software and Arch Linux related videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.